All right, it looks like we are live for our three o'clock live, well, almost three o'clock, a little bit after here today. I'm gonna give guests a couple of moments and let some people join in and I'm gonna walk you down this little trail right here. And then we'll go ahead and get started when we start to have some people. Awesome, looks like we are now officially live. Hopefully you guys can hear and see okay. Looks like we've got our first couple of people joining in here. Spectacular. So hello everyone, thank you so much for tuning in. My name is Kyle, I'm a park interpretive specialist with California State Parks. And today I'm out at a kind of little known location called Little River State Beach. Um, so what I'm gonna be talking about today is some of our kind of less known parks. And specifically, where do you go if you show up at one of your favorite parks and it's really crowded? Um, I haven't scouted on the trail, so there is some people coming, so I'll be flipping my mask on and off as we go. Um, keeping our social distancing and all that good stuff. These are some narrow trails. So, for now, just enjoy the walk. Either way you guys like, you're fine. All good. Excuse me. Of course. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and start walking down this trail and um, hopefully our service will hold up. It's a little bit windy today, a little bit overcast, but it's absolutely beautiful North Coast weather. So what I wanted to talk about today was where do you go if some of your favorite parks are busy? And so what I'm gonna talk about is some of the other parks in our district that are really, really beautiful, but maybe aren't as visited as frequently as some of kind of the famous locations that we have. So, um, you know, for myself personally, when I started working in this district, I didn't realize how many parks were up here. You know, we're, we're kind of familiar with some of the famous places like Humboldt Redwood State Park or Prairie Creek or even all those parks in Redwood National Parks. And those are really frequently visited. But there's actually 22 different parks up here in the North Coast, not just the three or four that we know really well. Um, so there's tons and tons of places to explore. This is one of the actually the biggest districts in the state um, for state parks is the North Coast Redwoods District. So there's 22 different parks up here, tons of places to check out, and lots and lots of really remote and lesser known parks. So those are some of the ones that I'm going to be talking about today. Um, I do want to say as a disclaimer that I have not visited all of these different locations. So as I'm talking, if those of you guys who are joining in have been to some of these places, um, go ahead and comment and tell us about your experience in those places. I'd love to hear about some of the things that you've seen or what you enjoy doing in these places that um, maybe we don't visit all the time. So um, Little River to me is one of those places. This is a beach park right in between Clam Beach and Moonstone Beach, which are kind of two more popularly visited places kind of in the McKinleyville area. Um, this is right off of Highway 101. There's a little bit of a walk through the dunes here as you can see what I'm doing right now. Um, I started you guys right by the parking lot, but we're almost out to the beach now and I'm feeling some of the wind here. Um, but this is one of those really cool places that, um, you know, Moonstone and Clam Beach are, are really popular beaches that can get a little bit more crowded, especially in the summertime. And so if you're looking for a little bit more remote beach, check out Little River. It's right in between those two parks. It's a really similar location, really similar beach. Um, <laughs> you guys get busy visiting. Yes, I would love to go and see all of those places. All right, so now we are just breaking through the dunes here. So check out that view. Or I should say the back dunes. <laughs> We've still got the front dunes to go through. But absolutely beautiful. All right, so I made a couple of notes here for some of the other parks um, that I haven't necessarily visited or don't know as much about. Um, a couple of weeks ago, I did go out to a park that I had never heard of before called John B. Dewitt Redwoods. Um, it's down south. It's um, kind of around the Humboldt Redwoods area um, by Garberville, a little bit further south of Humboldt Redwoods. And this was kind of a mind-blowing park. It was a, a redwood park. It's got some old growth features, um, but there's almost no facilities there. There's almost no trails, but it is a beautiful place to explore. There's a few different groves that you can park and kind of walk around a little bit um, and just is kind of a, a remote location. So if you know you want that kind of humble redwoods experience, but you don't want to go down the avenue or deal with um, maybe those crowded groves like Founders Grove, go check out um, John B. Dewitt Redwoods. It's a much less known location. All right. Let me go to my list now. Those are the two that I'm really excited about. Um, Harry A. Merlot is another park. Um, this is right near Humboldt Lagoons, right around Big Lagoon in this area. Um, it wraps all the way around the lagoons. So you're not quite in Humboldt Lagoons State Park. It's a little bit further south of that, um, but really popular for fishing and small boating that you can actually take, I think, right in the lagoon. And we've got um, Standish Hickey, which is in Leggett. This is kind of our most southern park 
on Highway 101, you know, the main road that comes up here. Um, and so people do go to this park. Um, it is mostly closed right now because of a water outage, but it does have camping almost all the time. It's a great place to go swimming on the Eel River. And um, it does have seasonal flooding in the winter. So if you want to see kind of that high water mark of the Eel River, maybe coming into the Redwoods and some of the parks, that might be a great place to visit. We've got Admiral William Stanley State Recreation Area, and this is actually our southernmost park. I didn't even know this until I was looking it up today, um, learning about some of these places. So this park is even further south than Standish Hickey. Um, it's way off of Highway 101 though, kind of buried in the coastal mountain range. So it has some elevation, it's up in the mountains, and it's got redwoods. And I gotta be honest, that's all I could find out about it. I've never visited that place, um, but it was really cool to find out about our park that's actually our southernmost park that we really don't talk about very much. So that's Admiral, Admiral William Stanley State Recreation Area. Um, we've got Azalea State National Reserve. Um, this is in McKinleyville. Um, I didn't know about this park until I was looking around my house for some places to go walking. And it turns out there's a state park like right behind my house. So, um, you know, it was one of those lesser known places. I hadn't really heard about it. And then I found out that there was a great place to go hiking right near my house. So that's always a good thing to find out. It is a relatively small park, but there's a nice loop through it. Um, and just, you know, a nice, a nice walk through nature real close to home. We've got uh, Moonstone, or we've got where I'm at today, Little River, a spectacular park, great place to go to the beach. And I'm going to try and get us as close to the ocean as possible and see how my service holds up here. I don't know exactly how good my connectivity here is. Um, we've also got Pelican State Beach. This is the northernmost state park just south of the Oregon border. This is north of Crescent City, north of Tallawa Dunes, and um, south of the Oregon border. Just a great little beach park where Tallawa Dunes is a little bit more popular, a little bit more well known. Um, this is a great place, you know, if you're up in that area coming from the north side of the parks, make a stop by Pelican Beach, and check it out. And last but not least on my list here, we have Smith Redwoods State National Reserve. This is in Piercy, kind of near Humboldt Redwoods. This was formerly a private resort, so I'm imagining the redwoods there are pretty spectacular. Um, we, I saw a couple of reviews on lines for absolutely beautiful groves, a waterfall that's over 60 feet tall, and it's a great place apparently for swimming and fishing. So again, I haven't been to this park myself, but I am making a list of places to go and check out because some of these lesser known places where um, you get to see the parks, you get to have these places to ourselves. Um, what really got me thinking about this was how much people talk about really liking the parks in the winter. They love the experience of, of being in these places when there's not a lot of people around, maybe because of the weather, or maybe it's rainy, maybe it's cold. Um, maybe people just don't have the time off that they have in the summer, like kids, you know, time off the school and those kinds of things. So to kind of get that winter park experience, maybe during the summer, check out some of these lesser known parks um, and you'll probably have less visitation it'll be less uh, crowded, and you'll get to see some really cool places that might be some new favorites for you as well. All right, well, that is what I have for um, as far as the parks that I wanted to just talk a little bit about. Those of you guys who are still with me, I'm just gonna keep walking on down to the water. We will see how far I get before I lose service. But um, while you're here, I'd love to hear about some of the other places that um, you guys like to visit, some of the less known parks that are some of your favorite, or maybe even the famous parks that are some of your favorites. Um, if you've had an experience in one of those parks, I'd love to hear about what you did there, what you liked about it, what you thought was special about it, and maybe we can get sharing some of these, um, some ideas of some other places to visit when you feel like these parks are crowded, especially with COVID-19 going on. Um, this next summer might feel a little different. We might not feel as comfortable going out to the parks, um, depending on where we are with the pandemic. So this might be a good way to kind of um, steer clear of people if you want a little bit more privacy, uh, if you want a little bit more of an isolated um, feeling. All right, so I saw a question. Is that the beach? This is not the beach. It's just a little inland puddle here. Not quite at the ocean. I am at the beach, but we're on the, um, we're going up to the front dunes now. We've got the back dunes. Came through with all of our good vegetation. Going to hit these front dunes, and just on the other side of these, we should see the ocean. And again, today I'm at Little River State Beach. Um, and there is the little river um, does drain out into the ocean just a little bit north of where I am. So hopefully we can see a little bit of that when we get over these over these dunes. Saw the question, how's the beach shore where you're at? Lots of kelp. I don't know. 
Haven't made it over the bluffs yet, but we'll see. Badlands National Park and Fun Notch Trail. I love that. Griff tuning in here. Service is surprisingly good. It is surprisingly good out here. He says, I love so many of the parks. I really like Humboldt Redwoods, Dry Lagoon, Prairie Creek, and Patrick's Point. Those are all some of my favorite parks as well. And that's something else to note is that um, you see some of these parks that are, are really busy and are really popular, like Humboldt Redwoods or like Prairie's Creek, Prairie Creek or um, Jed Smith Redwoods. And remember that some of these parks are absolutely massive. Humboldt Redwoods is huge. And so maybe next time you're visiting, if you feel like you're, you're feeling a little crowded in some of those kind of common areas that people like to visit, like in um, like Founders Grove or you know some of those other popular locations, see if you can get a hold of a trail map and see some places that you haven't been before. Explore some new places. It's always exciting. All right, we're just coming over the front dunes now. You can start to see the ocean out there. Got some corvids fighting up ahead. Love it. And I'm getting a little bit of the blast of the wind off of the off of the ocean, so I'm trying to hold my hand over the speaker so you guys don't get too much wind. But it might be a little windy here. Something I love so much about the North Coast is even when you have these kind of foggy and overcast days, there's no shortage of beauty out here. I mean, it's incredible. It is beautiful. I love foggy days in the Redwoods. I love foggy days at the beach. This is all part of the experience of being up here on the North Coast. So I questioned earlier if there was lots of kelp washed up on shore. It does not look like there's a lot of kelp today. We do have some sea foam out there. Lots and lots of shells. It's one of my favorite things about the beach is that you get washed up in the, uh, you know, in that shore break and with the tides and things like that, you get so many cool shells to check out. This looks like a mussel shell right here. It's got them all sun bleached. Lots of clam shells all over the place. All right. Just gonna walk right on down to the water finish out our walk through the dunes here looks like my connectivity is holding up so I'm pretty surprised about that so um, that's an added bonus to Little River State Beach got good cell phone service all the way down to the water it's bigger mussel shells here what's the coolest thing I found on the beach says Griff um, I'm a big fan of bugs and uh, those kinds of things. I like weird things. So one of my favorite things that I have found on the beach were the sand fleas that live in the sand. They're um, big arthropods, um, similar to what live in the oceans. There's giant arthropods in the ocean. But I love these little sand fleas and um, just watching them kind of hop around and dig. I like to, <laughs> to, probably not very nice, but I like to dig them up, put them on top of the sand and watch them burrow back down in. It's a whole lot of fun. I also enjoy finding um, dead things on the beach. I like to think about how far away things have washed up from and um, you know, just, just where these things come from that we find in driftwood and all of these clamshells and all this stuff. Lots of sea foam here today. If you guys are curious about how sea foam forms, um, a couple weeks ago, it was probably a couple months ago now, uh, Angie Edmonds, our MPA interpreter, did a video about how sea foam happens how it gets on the beach. So if you wanted to learn a little bit more about that, um, check out that video. Saw a couple of other questions here. Ooh, one of those less known parks here, Craters of the Moon National Park Cinder Cone Trail. Never heard of it before, but that sounds awesome. Craters of the Moon, what vivid imagery. Is there enough wind to fly a kite? I would say you could try. I'm getting good kind of bursts of wind where I think you could fly a kite, but it might not hold it up the whole time unless you're moving a little bit with it just absolutely gorgeous. I full-heartedly agree. Dogs allowed. I believe dogs are allowed on Moonstone and on Clam Beach since this is a state park 
beach, I'm not as sure. Um, dogs are not allowed on the trails, which I did have to walk a trail to get here, but maybe if you're accessing from a different beach. Um, but I would check online. I'm not 100% sure I can get back to you on that. Tide out, I believe the tide is out. Uh, last time I was here, the tide was up quite a bit more. I did not check my tide charts before I came out though, so I'm not 100% sure about that. And a reaction to my sand fleas. I love sand fleas. I, um, I discovered them kind of late in life, but I love those bugs. I love all these macroinvertebrates and things that live in the ground and the sand and the water. Those are some of my favorite creatures just to discover and, and see where they're living. Well, um, I want to thank you guys all so much for visiting with me and, and taking this little walk along the beach with me, checking out some of these lesser known parks here. Um, I keep walking a little bit, but I'm going to wrap this up here pretty soon. I saw, love the sound of the waves coming in. Me too. Open to the public. Yes, our parks are open to the public. Um, even during COVID, we've been trying to keep these outdoor spaces open so people can get out, get a little bit of fresh air and not be cooped up all the time. Um, so our parks are open, almost all of them are open. Um, in areas where the ICU capacity is below 15%, some of those areas have closed. So it's always a good idea to check and call. But so far on the North Coast, all 22 of our parks, as far as I know, are open for day use. Um, not all of our campgrounds are open and indoor spaces like our visitor centers and museums are closed. But you can come out to the parks and get some outside time. Jeanette Brown, do the sand fleas bite? I, um, that's a good question. I don't know. I have not been bitten by them. I've held them before. Um, I don't think that they fight, they bite, but they do have the name sand fleas. So, uh, <laughs> I'm not saying that with full confidence. I could do a little bit more research for you and get back to you on that. It's a great question. Well, all right, you guys, I'm going to call it there, but thank you again so much for joining me, taking this little walk down the beach, checking out Little River State Beach. Um, I might go and try and check out Azalea reserve at some other time that park right by my house another small park and just give you guys some ideas of some of the things that you can see in some of these less known places they're still absolutely beautiful parks still great places to visit so thank you guys all so much for tuning in appreciate seeing you all happy new year for, this is my first live stream of the year so i'm excited to see you guys all joining back in thank you so much for tuning in and we will see you next time so long everybody